Hi there, my name is Roland. I'm from Getting It Done North of Seven. And today, we're gonna to be fixing the Suzuki Iger. It's a 2004 Suzuki Iger 4x4. And I'm having issues with it uh, not idling. Like when I come to a stop, it'll just shut off. Sometimes, not all the time. I thought I had the, the issue fixed. What I did was, well, I did have a problem with my petcock. I have replaced the petcock and I'll put videos down below in the description where you can see videos to those repairs. And that did fix the problem. And then I started having an, a similar issue. You know, I'd be out cruising around and I'd stop until it got really hot. I would stop and it would shut off a lot of the times. It just wouldn't idle all the time. So what I did then is I took the carburetor apart, took the jets out, made sure all the, the ports were clean, everything was clean in that carburetor. But I noticed the diaphragm at the top looked a little different than, the, it looked the same, but it seemed weak. And I thought, well, I don't know anything about that. That could be it. So then I changed the choke. And because my choke, the the choke goes in, the plunger goes into the carburetor and then there's a black nut and that black nut is plastic. The threads are plastic. They had wore out and come out. So I changed the choke. I put a whole new choke in there, the plunger and everything. So I knew that wasn't the issue. So I was talking to a friend of mine who had a shop over here and he does fixes on ATV, side-by-side, -side, snowmobiles, and all sorts of things. And he says, change this thing. It's definitely going to be that. He was 100% positive. It's this diaphragm. So I ordered this diaphragm a while back. It showed up about a month ago, and I'm finally getting around to the fix. So before we get started, can I ask you to please hit the subscribe button? It really helps my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you know when my next video comes out. On this channel, we fix ATVs. We fix everything. Dirt bikes. We build things. We do gardening. We do just a little bit of everything. It's pretty entertaining. We do some cooking. <laughs> we do dehydrating of food. So yeah, go ahead. Hit that subscribe button now. I'd really appreciate it. So let's get started with this fix. All right, so just in case you haven't done anything like this before, I'm just going to show you some basic things to get to the carburetor and what you need to do. So you have to take this cover off here first. And I have most of these little tabs out of the way already. So there's my last one. I'm not sure. Maybe i got to undo this one here too. Yeah, so we'll take that out of the way. I'll put this tab back in here just to hold it in place so I don't lose it. So now this, give, this will give you access to the carburetor. Um, this cover on the other side is already off. I had it off before and I haven't put it back on, but the muffler is in the way and it just gets in your way. So you wanna come here to get to the carburetor. Now here is your air box. This was under the seat and there was a cover on it here with a bolt here and then you just snap back these and the cover comes off now the reason I said this can be a little difficult to remove the air box is because there's a bolt right in here a bolt in the nut so you have to wiggle your hands or your wrenches in there and get that out but once you do that it's all good I think there's another bolt and nut over on this side somewhere but this is the most difficult one I think it's this one or maybe one back here I'm not hundred percent sure but you, you'll find them when you go to do this. But this makes your getting your carb out so much easier because the rubber hose or the rubber, yeah, I guess they would call that a hose, inlet. See, your air comes in this way into your carburetor. It just, it's a stiff rubber and it makes it hard to get the carburetor out and then put the clamp back on and, and all that stuff. So getting this out of the way makes it so much easier because you bring this rubber with it. So I'll be undoing the clamp here where this rubber hose clamps on to the carburetor. Okay, so what I ended up doing was loosening the air box and I just backed it up a bit and then I bent the hose out of the way, tucked it down here, the hose that goes on to the back of the carburetor here. So now I'm gonna 
detached the throttle cable from inside here and right inside there on the side of the carburetor was a black cover with one screw so I just backed the screw out took it off now I have to detach this cable throttle cable from here and I'm gonna have to go on the other side in a minute and undo fuel lines and the choke cable to get the carburetor out so in order to get this cable off it has a a keeper here I call it a keeper that slips into here so I'll have to bend this back and then just move this cable around here to this open slot so that we can get it out there we go so you put that back and your carburetor sitting here and I'll have to undo the nut here to just loosen it lightly so you can pull the the cable this way out so all I did was back up this nut a couple threads and it just slipped right out of this the part here where the cable fits in here like this. So now we got that done we'll go on the other side and undo the fuel line and the choke. Okay so what I'm going to do is I backed up the, the clamp on the fuel line. I'm going to pull it off now but just, I already got the fuel off. Make sure you shut the fuel off at the petcock. I'm going to try and catch this fuel if there's anything that pops out. Okay, here we go. Probably a little bit of fuel will come out of the carp. Nope, mostly out of the line, so that's good. So there we go, we just caught it in here. It's good enough, just a couple drops. Now we'll unhook the choke and any other little lines that might be hooked up to the carburetor. Okay, so what I did was I took I took this end of the carburetor from the intake that goes into the head. So I took the hose off of here, I loosened the clamp and just backed it off. And there was a breathing tube here that goes to the, from this right here, this carburetor, the little hose that goes out over here. It's just a breather, breather tube. Took it off. So now I got to disconnect the choke and this carburetor will come out. Okay, there you go. We have the carburetor out. And that diaphragm will be sitting under here at the top. So we're just going to take it over to the bench tear it apart and replace that diaphragm. You can see when you look in this end here, you can see the diaphragm sitting in there. All right, so now we have the carburetor on the workbench here and we're gonna take this top cap off to get at our diaphragm. See now, this has a spring that goes in under this cap, so we have to remember that. Take the spring out. And here's another thing, this plastic thing that goes underneath the spring. Okay, so here is our problem. You see this diaphragm? It's ripped here. Can you see that? It's ripped. It's tearing here. And who knows, maybe this has been stretched, you know, over time. So we're, we, it's a good, uh, see that guy was right. My, my, the, my friend was right. He says, change that diaphragm on the top. He says, I'll bet you that's your problem. So inside this diaphragm, there's a, a jet in here, or a needle, or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take that out, and we'll put it here with the rest of the parts. So there you go. There's our problem. We'll match these up to make sure we got the correct one. They look pretty good. Make sure this width is right, yeah. Everything is perfect. So now we'll put the needle back into here. Into the new diaphragm. So there, there is our needle. Now I'm going to take a quick look around here and make sure everything's clean. So like I said before, I've had this carburetor apart recently so I know that everything is likely clean and I don't want to have to redo it so I'm going to show you something here not sure if you can see that right in there there's a hole where this needle goes down in there and we're going to just gently get that lined up properly and slip it down in there there we go as you can see the needle is inside that hole now our diaphragms in there everything is sitting nice 
and we'll put our spring in that plastic part down in there where it goes on top of that needle and we go like that this is all clean looks good we'll place this right on top of there like that perfect so don't let you don't let go of this because that's that spring is under there right and we'll put our screws back on this went a lot smoother than I thought it would <laughs> I wish all repair jobs went this smooth and then we're not going to snug these up we're just going to tighten them up just a bit not completely so we get all the screws in and everything's lined up and goes down evenly Suzuki Iger 400 it's a 2004 and I bought it in two, 2017 later in the year in the fall and it's run great until we had that petcock issue about um, geez when was that that was early spring I believe and uh, or maybe in the winter not sure I have videos for that like I said I'll put it down in the description below and that sort of solved the problem we'll snug these up now and then we had other issue with um, what was it oh the choke but we also had starter brush starter problems too it was clicking and uh, wouldn't start so I took the starter out took it apart and realized that the starter the brushes inside the starter were wore out so I ordered new brushes on, I think it was Amazon, and I have links below, uh, in that video too in the description where you can get those parts. And uh, it worked great after that. And then now this issue, and now we, we know exactly why that issue was there. But like I said, I had this carburetor apart before, and we cleaned it all up. And you know what? It, it was fine. It wasn't dirty anyway. So I didn't touch anything. We changed the diaphragm now. So now what I'm going to do is, ah, all the, there's still fuel coming out. What I'll do is I will, whoops, I will adjust the, the jets to its factory settings. I'll go look it up on the computer, see what I need, where I need to set it. And we'll set it and then we'll put the carburetor back into the ATV and we'll try it out. All right, I adjusted the jet on this carburetor. I looked it up. It said to turn it all the way in. So you turn it all the way in clockwise till it seats itself. You just do it lightly. Don't seat it hard. Back it back out two and one half turns. So I'm gonna put this back into the ATV and then we'll fire it up and see how it works. All right, now I just wanna show you guys this really quick. This is where you hook up your choke into the carburetor. This is a plastic nut, and this is metal. So they don't go good together. Plastic nuts don't work good with metal because you can easily cross thread and just ruin the threads on this plastic nut. So I just wanted to show you that so that you are very careful. Make sure that your plunger, when you hook up your choke back into the uh, carburetor, make sure that your plunger is in there all the way. There's a spring in there. Um, between the plunger and this nut that slides up and down on the cable and you get it all squeezed in there and you make sure that you push this down and it seats nicely as level as it can be before you start turning and trying to catch a thread because if it's off a little bit you'll wreck the threads on this nut easily and then you probably have to replace the whole plunger kit that comes with this um, choke so you get the plunger, the nut, and I think this part here. And it's not cheap. It's like um, here in Canada, I think I paid like, I'm guessing, I can't remember now, it was like 70 bucks, I think, $70. So just be careful with that there. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that plastic nut. It's a stupid thing to put in a carburetor like this.
Yep, it's idling a little bit high. Obviously, maybe I gotta cut back the idle screw. Maybe I gotta make another adjustment on the carburetor. I don't know, but definitely that diaphragm was ripped and no good. So we'll see what happens if it uh, if it continues to act up a little bit like it was, or if it's gonna be fully improved. So I hope this repair of the Suzuki Iger 400 carburetor helps you guys. It's if your carburetor's running funky. You know, and, you know, don't want to idle or start right. That diaphragm is actually one of the things that you could check. You could also have a dirty carburetor. Maybe your air fuel mixture is off. There's, there's a multiple things, but at least we know that that was the issue. And my friend was correct when he said, check that diaphragm. So there we go. If you guys enjoyed this sort of video, you enjoyed this content please hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell i'd really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video thank you again and don't forget to subscribe